Hi, my name is Natalie Malashenko, and I received an international travel subsidy from the Barber School of Arts and Science at UBC Okanagan, and with it, I am heading to Kenya to take a field course. So I'm about an hour away from hopping on a flight from Amsterdam to Nairobi. More to update later. The course I attended focused on the ecology of African savannas, and it was held at the Impala Research Center. And I just want to give a quick tour of where I live before I forget. So, this is our tent that Adrian and I share. There is a lantern, which uh, someone lights for us every evening so we can find our tent. And these are some wash basins, which are filled in the morning and the evening with um, river water so that we can wash our faces and whatnot. Um, this is a chair where I leave my laundry and it magically gets washed for me. And uh, this is our drawing rack. And this is the view. So I don't think you can hear the river on here, but you can see it. It is very close just down there. And then all the tents are set up along this river. It's kind of meandering along where the hippos are rowdy every evening. So there's an area here to hang up our clothes up here and then and, uh, stand to stand on so that we uh, don't get all muddy. And then up here is the actual uh, water holder. So they fill that with water for us. And then this lever just allows, oops, just allows us to get water in and up. It's actually pretty nice. I had applied to work at Impala a few years ago as a small mammal research assistant. And I was very excited to finally get to see this place that I had heard so much about. The course was led by Dr. Todd Palmer from the University of Florida and Dr. Jake Goheen from the University of British Columbia. Throughout our time at Impala, we learned a variety of field techniques, including radio telemetry, small mammal trapping, mist netting bats and birds, and we learned how to use camera traps, which are motion activated cameras that allow us to detect the presence of animals. The wildlife at Impala and throughout the district of Lycipia was incredible. I felt like I was on safari the whole time I was there. From the perspective of a biologist who has never visited mainland Africa, I was absolutely enchanted by what I saw. These elephants were photographed from just outside my dorm room. They, like many other animals, were dangerous if you were on foot. This meant that we had to be creative to exercise. Luckily, the local villagers were always excited to play with us. The trip up Mount Kenya was one of the most memorable experiences of my life. We didn't see much wildlife, and it was very different than the savanna, but the plants were absolutely otherworldly. As we gained elevation and entered the alpine zone, the vegetation began to resemble something out of a Dr. Seuss novel. Every plant was so unique. Feeling good. Um, we're taking it at a really slow pace, so hopefully the elevation will be a problem. We were really lucky to be able to rent cold weather gear in Nanyuki, a town just outside of the Impala Research Center, because when you pack for a trip to visit the equator, you don't anticipate encountering sub-zero temperatures. My favorite animal of the trip was not any of the charismatic megafauna that we saw in the savanna, but instead reuniting with chameleons, which I had first experienced in Madagascar about a decade ago. A close second were the rock hyraxes, who seemed to be as curious about us as we were about them. To summit the peak at sunrise, we had to start hiking in the middle of the night. It seemed to take forever because we were walking so slowly, because the elevation was very high and it was difficult to catch our breath. But it was all well worth it. We arrived at the peak five minutes before sunrise, in time to watch the world unfold before us and see the sun peak over the horizon. The view from Point Lenana was magnificent. It touched my soul and it will be a moment that I will always remember.